Hi, this is Steve Adam, Co Spectrum Interiors. Uh, I'm starting a new series here called uh, Let's Talk About Dot Dot Dot. So, this first installment, we're going to talk about lighting and how important it is. Uh, most lighting that's done today is done without a whole lot of plan. And uh, it's especially important in brand new homes or remodels that a floor uh, plan is done and then a reflected ceiling plan is done on top of that. So, uh, so we know exactly where our light is positioned and it's based on what we really want the lighting plan to accomplish for us. And that all revolves strongly around ambiance, mood, and feeling. Okay, so the idea is that we want to see the effects of the lighting, not just the lighting sources themselves. Now, in certain cases, like chandeliers and things, the aesthetical value of the fixture is very important, just as the lighting is very important. Another aspect is that the more we can zone lighting and put different fixtures uh, on uh, dimmers or rheostats, the better we are because it gives us a broader range of play with the uh, emotion that can be generated by the space. In addition to that, we need to know how dark or light the space is going to be, what kind of textures, what kind of materials, things of that nature, and uh, what it is that we're going to be lighting, whether it's cocktail tables, seating groups, uh, artwork, sculpture, and all of that. So I'm going to co just cover very briefly three different lamp styles or bulb styles. The lamp is what the professionals call them. And I'm going to start first with the one that most people are acquainted with and that is the A lamp or the, the you know typical bulb that would go into a regular table lamp. Okay, the situation with this is that light is emanating in all directions. So there is no particular control of this. All right. And uh, then we have another type called a reflector lamp. And these are usually in spots or floods. And so it's very focused lighting that goes out in a direction like that because it has a base reflector. Now a spot is going to be tighter and a flood is going to be wider angle. All right. Now a refinement of that concept is a bulb like this. It's called an MR16. You can see that relative to the reflector lamp, it's quite a bit smaller. Now this operates off 120 volts. This is low voltage, or let's say 12 volts. It takes a transformer to step down the, 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 the voltage so that you can, you can operate these things. But these are much more controlled, and on top of that, they're also color corrected. They're much more balanced. You'll see these, when I say color corrected, we're talking about, let's say, the, the, the uh, the color circle, the rainbow, you know, all of the colors that you have, it's very balanced in a warm and cool spectrum and so it renders cool colors and warm colors very equally. Okay, that's why they're used in jewelry stores because a diamond uh, uh, splits light into the colors of the rainbow and that's part of what they call fire. So they want those gems to have a lot of fire, a lot of spark, a lot of color. These types of light, lighting uh, fixture or bulbs accomplish that. Okay, now in addition to that, uh, if we look at, uh, let's say, the wall and the ceiling, okay, uh, the way a, a fixture is positioned, depending on what it is you want to light, determines a lot of things. Let's say we're, this is going to be a piece of artwork, and depending on how low or high the ceiling is, is going to depend on where we position that lamp and what angle we attack it from, so to speak. So you can see that if, if we were to say uh, put a center line of this lamp and it strikes the center of this art object, each lamp is going to have a different beam spread and a different intensity uh, to it. Okay, so we would have to determine well how much light do we want to put on this surface or this artwork? How far away is the source going to be? What's the beam spread? How tight do we need this? Like if we need more control than that, that MR16 lamp comes in, you know, narrow spot, spot, flood, things of that nature. Um, so what we're trying to work around here is a concept and, and uh, called photometrics. Okay, photometrics is all about the performance of these bulbs. Like 
beam spread, intensity, and it will, you know, the further away light travels, the less intense it becomes. You get up close to a light that's very, very bright, you get way back from it, obviously it's not as, as brilliant or as intense. And you can consider a concept very similar to um, the old-fashioned screw-on type um, nozzle on a hose. If you open it up, it just sprays out very wide and, and very gently. Okay, you can wash your car that way. If you screw it down tight, you, now you have a pencil stream of water that can knock dirt off a sidewalk or other things. And if you're in a nice water fight, it will go out and touch somebody, you know, uh, and it will travel a lot farther. So it's the same kind of concept. In other words, uh, and, and the wattage too is kind of like pressure. The, uh, the, the more pressure is applied, the further it goes out. So, you know, a 40 watt just doesn't have as much push and, and, and punch as a 100, 150, 300 watt, that type of thing. So we want to understand that it, the lamp does the job, it's not the holder or the can. Uh, that, that acts as like your hand, okay? It just holds it, that's all, and directs it. Uh, it's the lamp that does the job. And so we have to work at this lighting plan backwards. We have to determine what kind of effect, what kind of lighting illumination levels to, to bring in a lot of variety and a lot of interest and to, uh, you know, let's say enhance textures. If a wall is very textured, we might want to have lighting that's in a, in a row that's grazing the wall. The light beam is coming down to accentuate the texture. If you take a bunch of lamp fixtures, and you know, if you could, come at it directly, you can take a textured surface and actually flatten it. In other words, it, it looks flatter and not textured, basically because there's no shadowing. Okay, so that will give you a little bit of understanding about the intricacies and also the um, available aspects of how to handle lighting in a proper way to get the most for everything that you do, to make the architecture come alive, to make the furniture come alive, to have more ambiance, mood, and variety within the space. All right, so we'll take up on this and, and other topics here in further series and in further installments. This is Steve Adamco, Spectrum Interiors, wishing you a very wonderful day.